because we're keeping proper, you know, social distancing and isolation here, I'm gonna let my mask down just for the purpose of our discussion. But this is a reminder you should be wearing yours when you're out in public around anybody else, okay? This is Dr. Awusu Wachow with Ortho Virginia. I'm at the Schrader Road office. If you wanna learn more about our office and our entire practice, go to orthovirginia.com for more information. We're the largest multi-special orthopedic group in the state of Virginia and providing the top quality care to people of all ages and walks of life. Now, my personal area of expertise is sports medicine surgery. So especially that means anterior cruciate ligament or the ACL you may have heard of, I repair those. I treat cartilage injuries to the knee and sports injuries to the shoulder and the hip. A lot of that is arthroscopic surgery. But we're kind of taking a little bit of a detour from that kind of discussion today because these times kind of have changed how we think about things for sure. So the first thing I'm gonna say is to all of y'all who have been affected by the pandemic, those of you who have lost loved ones my deepest condolences go out to you, okay? Those of you who have economic burdens, financial hardships from jobs that are lost, I can't imagine what you're going through. The way forward here, you know, after all that's going on is together. So we have to look out for each other and maintain our precautions as we move forward. So, you know, sports is very near and dear to my heart as it is to many of y'all's. I know for a lot of people, you know, depending on what level you're playing at, it's just, it's a psychological release. You know, it keeps you focused, it keeps you uh, where you need to be mentally and emotionally. It may mean community for you, it may mean fellowship, that's how you meet with the people you love. It may mean opportunity for you as well. For a lot of people, sports is an opportunity as they go up uh, to higher and higher levels of play to go to places they wouldn't have gone otherwise. So I understand uh, of the many things that have been negatively impacted by this pandemic, sports is one that has hit a lot of us very hard. And for that reason, I wanted to kind of take a step back and talk about how this has affected athletes of all levels, this COVID pandemic. And on that topic, there's a lot of things to really discuss. So we can talk about A, excuse me, how to safely maintain precautions as we try to do the activities that we can do. B, we could talk about for those athletes who happen to get COVID or have had COVID and recovered, what do they need to be worried about moving forward? And then more largely, I would say C is, when we finally get to that new normal, which we will, what do we need to worry about having not been playing for so long, having been out of sports for so long? So we'll start with talking about the safety precautions we need to be thinking about. So the CDC guidelines and the Virginia Department of Health guidelines related to sports specifically are very clear and been outlined well. And I encourage anybody who's an athlete, the family member of an athlete, knows an athlete to be familiar with these guidelines. So you can go online and look at all the bullet points, point, 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 by, by yourself um, on your own. But I'll give you the highlights of what I think you really need to take home, okay? So when we think about sports participation, you can look at the highest risk versus the lowest risk type activities. Of course, the highest risk is playing sports just like we used to, especially for youth sports. So what did that mean? That meant traveling, going and playing other teams elsewhere. So what were you doing? You were, you were in practice, you were getting on a bus, y'all all close together, all right? Y'all going off to another school, you're in another locker room, sharing, sharing, you know, equipment, sharing this and that. Of course, that's the highest risk for transmission of, of any virus, COVID included. So naturally, at this point in time, we're not doing that so much. So we think of it as the higher risk. As you keep on moving down the amount of social contact you have with sports, of course, the risk decreases. So the lowest risk, of course, is at home practice by yourself, isolated, where you're working on drills by yourself, where you're maintaining your core strength where you're working, doing your squats, where you're doing your planks, where you're doing your wall sits, right? And then in between there somewhere, it's kind of a sweet spot we have to see if we can't find, okay? So again, if you look at the CDC guidelines regarding uh, playing sports, also on the lower end of risk for transmission when playing is team sports while maintaining social distancing in a large enough area, usually outside um, in a well-ventilated area or what have you, okay? To go over some of the more specifics, so mask wear is a must, as we all know, as it relates to everything, okay? And then the six feet distance, uh, the six feet of social distancing is also key. And you can remember that sometimes people use the two arms length as kind of a key or a, a tip to remember they're keep, keeping themselves six feet apart. But I think it's important to remember that in situations where there's strenuous activity, i.e. running, jumping, pivoting, dunking, whichever you do, um, 
the risk for transmission goes up a bit. So the CDC guidelines actually increase to 10 feet if you're doing strenuous activities of that sort. So that needs to be kept in mind. That 10 feet also applies in a situation where there might be cheering or chanting or people you know, raising their voices too. Because remember, droplet um, transmission is the largest transmitter for COVID, okay? So when we're thinking about what we can do, the safest thing, of course, is being by yourself or being isolated performing drills or in a smaller group where everybody can be socially distanced, ideally outside wearing masks and performing you know, drills, okay? Um, limited contact as much as possible, okay? So those are really the guidelines when it comes down to that. There's been a lot of concern about those athletes who may have contracted COVID over the course of time. And you have to think again, there are people who are at higher risk for having a bad outcome having had COVID at any age range. But for younger athletes, for those of you who may have diabetes, who may have asthma, lung and heart conditions, those people in particular need to be, need to be the most concerned if they have had come, uh, had come down with COVID, okay? So the guidelines pertaining to that, there's been some recommendations that any athlete really who has con contracted COVID, a known case of COVID, should be evaluated by their primary care doctor for the possibility of needing a referral to a cardiologist, a heart specialist, okay? We know that there are potentially long-term effects to the heart and lungs related to COVID-19. And so it's important that if you know you've been exposed, if you know you've contracted COVID, that you look at that before returning to any kind of strenuous activity because there could be long-term you know, sort of uh, results or um, I'll say impact related to your breathing and your heart condition, okay? So all that's very important for your safety as we tr do try to move back to a new normal as time goes on. And then, you know, kind of the third category that we talk about is what do we do when we're trying to get back to that new normal, right? So over the course of time, you know, with the pandemic, we've lost our normal rhythm of life. There's a training session, an off season, and you play in a season and you go on, right? So you're used to using your body more regularly in a more regular manner, right? But with this disruption, you know, athletes, they're really not playing like they were, right? So people become deconditioned. And as a sports specialist, I can tell you things like ACL tears and that sort of thing, that when they happen, they happen more commonly to people who are deconditioned, right? So if your core strength or your quadriceps strength or your, or your gluteus strength isn't where it used to be, then you're at more risk for landing in an awkward position, right? Twisting your knee in the wrong way. And then there goes the ACL, okay? And so during this pandemic, none of that's changed. And that risk, risk has increased because we're not having team practices. We're not being able to see the coach and not being able to see the trainers to stay in our usual routine, okay? And I'll remind you that, you know, once you stop regularly performing sporting activity, it takes days, not months, for you to lose your gains. Some studies say that you lose 10% of your muscle gains and endurance per week, every week that you're not doing what you were doing. So this is a very real concern as we move forward. So from that standpoint, it is very important that we find ways to do sports-specific drills and activities in a safe, socially distanced way. So for a lot of you, that's gonna mean at home working on those drills that you know from before, right? And if you're a basketball player, you may be working on dribbling drills. Same thing for a soccer player. A football player may be working on, you know, uh, footwork and that sort of thing, hand dexterity on their own. Everybody should be working on core strength. You should all be doing planks at home. You should all be doing setups and crunches and wall sits, right? For the dancers out there, you may be doing bar work on your own in a socially distanced manner. All this is important for maintenance. So while we find ourselves in this situation where we can't play competitive sports in the same way we used to, we really need to be working on our individual strength and conditioning, right? So that we don't see an increase of injuries once we do finally transition into that new normal. So again, to go over that, the kind of three things we need to think about when we're talking about COVID and athletes are, uh, for those sports and those things that we can do, how do we maintain maximum safety? And again, just like everything else really, that comes down to distancing and mask use. In the second category, for those who have contracted COVID, what do we need to be worried about? And again, that's of the utmost imperative importance that you are being seen by primary care doctors and if need be, a heart and lung specialists to make sure that you are safe to go back to playing any kind of strenuous sports or activities if you have known COVID diagnosis, 
And then third, like we just discussed, is the question or the concern for deconditioning, having been out of our normal rhythm uh, for sports participation. And I think the key there is, again, going back to the first point, really, is maintaining, uh, finding a way to perform our sporting activities, or at least the individual portions of it that we can, so that we can maintain conditioning in a safe way. Is that all? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we have a few questions that have been coming in that I want to read to you. And you kind of just touched on this. Um, one of the questions was that her son was the high school quarterback and had COVID in July. And she had asked to let you know, or to let her know what the effects are afterwards. And I'm guessing should he be cleared to play? So I want to be careful about giving anybody individual uh, medical advice because I haven't met you or your son in particular. But what I will tell you is that I think it's important that anyone who has a known uh, diagnosis of COVID over the course of this be seen by a primary care specialist and then potentially by a heart or lung specialist to make sure they're safe to play. Okay, sounds good. Sort of in that same uh, realm, my son missed football in the spring. I'm sorry, my son missed football, but in the spring they're supposed to play. Should he be doing any extra training since he hasn't been in months? Absolutely, and I'm not sure what position your son is playing, but you know, if you're if you're a defensive back, you may be working on footwork, right? If you're a quarterback, you may be doing throwing drills in the backyard by yourself to stay to stay fit. You might be working on dexterity or um, ball handling skills if you're a wide receiver, what have you. There are different ways you can kind of stay with. It. And again, like I said earlier, endurance, core strength, all that stuff that applies across all athletic fields. But I absolutely think that you should be putting that extra effort with the time that you have into working on those individual skills that you can do safely by yourself. Perfect, and that kind of led into another question about high school and college athletes at being at a higher risk for injury for being out of practice for long. Absolutely, yeah. So like we discussed, with every week that goes by that you're not playing at that same level of intensity, you're losing at least 10% of the gains you had before every week. That stuff goes fast. And so, you know, when you get tired quickly, that's when you're at risk for injury. That's when the ACL tears happen. That's when the shoulder dislocations happen. That's when the hip injuries happen, all that sort of things. And we don't, you know, as much as we love to take care of our community, we don't want you to have to come see us for those reasons. So I think the best thing possible is to try and keep the conditioning that you can keep in a safe and socially distanced way. Okay. Are you a fan of single sport versus multi-sport to reduce injuries? pandemic has decreased what's available and I'm just curious. Well, I think that's an interesting question. It was one, it was an interesting question before the pandemic, to tell you the truth. So, especially with youth sports in particular, we had, we have an increasing concern about over-specialization, i.e. kids playing the same sport throughout the year. And the reason being is you see more and more overuse injuries for that very reason, because they're using the same muscle groups as opposed to cross training when you play baseball in the spring, basketball in the winter, what have you, right? So that was a, that was a concern before then. Over-specialization continues to be a concern because if you, you know, during COVID happen to just start specializing on just one skill set or one in particular sport, you may be at risk for overuse injuries, especially if it's a situation where maybe someone's not watching your form or, or necessarily like that. So. Um, I think to answer that question, I would focus again on those general skills that really apply to all sports. Again, the core strength, dexterity, footwork, and that sort of thing. Okay, perfect. Another question is, I'm used to running several races a year and training with a large group. Since COVID hit, I haven't been able to train with the group. Any suggestions? Unfortunately, training with a large group in this, in this climate is largely kind of out of the out of the question um kind of like we discussed before uh the cdc and the virginia department of health have made it clear you know the risk for transmission is higher with strenuous activity so if you are running in a large group that's probably the highest one of the highest possible transition points that there could be um so i think really as much as we can be you know training but on the individual basis as much as that may hurt and i know that's it's hard to lose that community um, I think that's what's safest for now until we transition into the new normal. That completely makes sense to me. What are your thoughts about middle school kids playing in their soccer leagues with masks on? It has been recommended by the coach. Do you think that is okay or will harm them? I don't, I don't know of any literature or data showing that wearing a mask while doing these kind of activities will, will cause harm. Now, 
on the individual basis, if someone is really struggling wearing a mask while playing, they may need to kind of sit out from that level of competitive play until it's safe for us to move forward. Because I think the the um, the benefit of wearing masks can't be under understated. It's something we have to continue doing. So, you know, to answer that question, it is not, to our knowledge, it is not grossly unsafe to wear a mask while playing these sports. Okay, good to know. As a sports medicine doctor, you also treat those who might not describe themselves as athletes, but they come to you for overuse and repetitive injuries. Has COVID and the focus on home projects like my husband doing garden work and building new things in the shed, increased, excuse me, increased injuries that you're seeing? I've seen, I've seen an increase in what I call um, DIY, uh, DIY type injuries. People who were trying to put together stuff in their shed and they hurt their biceps tendon or something like that. That, that has definitely increased. So I would encourage everyone to be careful and be safe with what you're doing. And even though you're at home, you know, make sure you know what you're doing if you're you know, working on stuff. Um, so the increase in that sort of injury, overuse injuries, uh, from again being at home trying to do things like that, I've seen an increase of, yes. Okay. What types of injuries are athletes getting when they train by themselves? And this is kind of a three part question, so I'll ask you that first. Okay. Part one. So I mean I think that I think that really varies. Um, again we talked about overuse. So training by yourself without having somebody kind of coach you or make sure your form is good or what have you, it can be easier to uh, you know, have an overuse injury. So if you're a thrower or a pitcher, you're used to having someone watch your form and you're kind of throwing on your own. If your mechanics are off and you keep throwing like that over the course of time, you may see an increase in elbow or shoulder injuries. Okay. Yeah. And to lead in that, the other part was what types of injuries are they more at risk for? So again, I think it comes back to the, to the overuse injuries really. Um, the other thing I've seen is um, some uh, kind of younger athletes who are again used to playing in a more controlled environment through high school what have you who are now playing in kind of less controlled you know we'll call them off the record seven on seven tournaments that kind of thing for football in particular so i've seen acl injuries happen on account of that and again i would say that's likely because they're not conditioned like they were before so i talk about the acl a lot it's one of my areas of expertise so we know the acl injuries happen when people land on their knee in an awkward position, okay? And a lot of that has to do with how much control you have from the muscles above your knee. So your quadriceps muscles right there above your knee, but even higher up is your core, right? And your gluteus muscles in the back. Um, everyday living doesn't really condition those muscles like other stuff does, right? So when you see deconditioning of those muscles, again, that 10% every week you're not playing, when you then try to go back and play, even in a, let's say, a lesser, um, or a less uh, crowded environment than you normally would be, you are at risk for those injuries. Okay, perfect. Let's see, the next question I have is, at least I think you sort of touched on this, but has COVID changed aspects of who you care for and how you care for them? Well, we always took care of athletes and patients of all walks of life who wanted to stay moving. And that's really the whole, let's say the whole goal, the whole mission statement of orthopedics is maintaining movement. So that aspect hasn't changed. Uh, like we kind of stated before, we're seeing, or I'm seeing personally a little bit more of the overuse injury or the do-it-yourself injury where someone tries to lift too much or does too much for too long. And um, that's because their normal schedule of life, the rhythm of their life has been thrown off by the pandemic. Perfect. My daughter's school has, a, has excuse me, an athletic trainer on staff. Do you feel the athletic trainers are helpful to reduce the injuries? A athletic trainers, the they are incredible, all right? And they have incredible training for making sure that athletes are maintaining good form, that they're not overusing or doing uh, too much in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, let's say the amount of time they're playing, all right? So I think that the role they play cannot be overstated. Okay, let's see. Is now the perfect time to have my injury repaired or, or do you feel that I'm at risk for COVID in a hospital? So that's a hard question to answer. Every hospital has a different uh, load of COVID patients. That being said, every hospital that I know of is taking the utmost precautions to make sure tra you know, transitions are not happening, transmissions are not happening. Um, so you know, I think that's an individual question. You will have to decide on your own 
and have a discussion with your doctor about how safe you feel about things. But I know a lot of hospitals, ours included, the ones I operate at, are testing patients before surgery and making sure people are negative before we even go into the, the surgical period. So you have to talk to your doctor about your, your concerns there. Would it help if I filmed my daughter training and sent it to her coach for pointers on form? I think that's a great idea. Uh, people have done things like that. There have been Zoom conferences. You may have seen there are even apps that have come out. And I have no disclosures. I have no stock in any of these apps. But um, there are apps that have come out to help people stay with dribbling drills and kind of give you things you should be doing. So teleconferencing for people to check on form, to provide drills, I think is a great idea. It's a great novel way for us to do what we can during this pandemic. Okay, this was a follow-up question. Oh, thank you for that. This is a follow-up question to uh, feeling safe in a hospital setting. Do you have an, uh, a surgery center, excuse me, a surgery center where I could have a surgery there? Well, the Virginia has several surgery centers um, that are not affiliated with a hospital per se. And again, the utmost precautions are taken for screening patients before a surgery and what have you to limit transmission. So again, you know, if you have concerns, an individual discussion between you and your physician is the most important thing about your risk factors and the risk factors wherever you may be. Okay. Well, we have a personal question for you. Oh. What are you personally doing to stay fit during COVID? Oh, that's a great question. So I have a plyometric uh, routine that I do at home. It involves me taking um, a, uh, a medicine ball of several you know, different weights and performing power cleans and some jump squats. Um, I use the, um, again, no disclosures, I have no stock in Nike. I use the Nike, um, the Nike app to go through some core exercises. I know I mentioned that earlier, so planks and, and all that sort of thing. And then, you know, I, I do enjoy basketball from time to time, so I've done um, some dribbling drills kind of by myself and with my, my infant son watching, he finds it entertaining, so. Okay, perfect. Looks like I have one or two left. Um, this one said, it's not an athlete question, but I've been working Excuse me, I've been working from home since the pandemic and I'm sitting a lot longer. Anything, and sorry, and feeling much stiffer. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I think the more that everybody, athlete, not athlete, we, the more that we all can incorporate stretching and the flexibility routines into our daily life, I think the better we are. So working at home, you know, increases how much we're sedentary and it makes it hard to really get moving. So as much as you can build into your work schedule as it allows time to, excuse me, get up and stretch or making, maybe making stretching part of your morning or evening routine so you're keeping your joints flexible. Okay, looks like we have one more personal question as a follow-up. Mm -hmm. What type of music do you listen to to train? Uh, well, I, I personally listen to hip hop when I, when I train. Uh, I find that the, you know, having a nice beat keeps me going, keeps me motivated. And I think this might be our last one. How would you recommend that I weight train at home if I don't have actual weights? Well, if you're in a situation where you don't have weights, other options exist, right? So you can do band work, all right? Resistance bands are good. If you're not going that route, there's always, you know, body weight exercises. So again, we've talked about doing squats, squat jumps, wall sits. You can be doing push-ups. And again, I'm gonna keep on harping on core because we all neglect our core. Those planks, man, you gotta be doing those planks. I would like to say that with the pandemic hitting and me not going to a gym, I've been doing several planks at home. Ah. They are definitely difficult, but worth it. Got to do them. So I think that was all the questions we have right now. Um, so I wanted to say thank you for your time. Oh, well, I appreciate y'all having me. Thanks for watching. Remember to stay safe and maintain that social distancing. You should be wearing that mask out in public. All right, setting a good example. Thank you very much.